dying trade. It's uh, well, nobody does it anymore. Once you get that in your blood, that salt water, you cannot walk away from it. He, he was the last of the diehards. He was the, he was the last one. It was a hard man, but look, that was my playground. No rules. I was wild. That's the way I was brought up. It was my dad, my mother, my best mate, my worst enemy. Awesome man. It's a pity there wasn't lots more Derricks in the world. Um, because he took out the life what he needed to survive, and nothing more, nothing more. Um, he worked for need, um, and he took what he needed. He didn't work for greed, no. I met Derek on the beach. Um, well, I wouldn't say I really met him. I came into contact with him, I guess because I was competition with him. Um, it was a little frosty, but we got there. We got there, um, and we got into going along for a cup of tea, and it just evolved from there. When my wife and me first got married and, and my kids were little, um, I couldn't afford cool. There's four pints of lager. Um, we struggled to afford food, never mind anything. I would go to Bog Hall and get cool. And I used to see this character with his um, tractor and trailer. And then he would put his bags on the tractor, and my bags on the tractor, and, and bring them up for us. He used to work down the mines, and he thought, hang on, sea cool, pit, sea cool, so he got himself a horse and a cart. It provided an income for a lot of people, a lot of families. Years ago, I used to be eight, I counted 80 horse and carts on that beach at Limehouth. 3,000 tonne a week used to come off that beach. It was it was like the Klondike. On that beach, it was like a Klondike. Very competitive. It was like going back in the, going back to the Wild West. Quite hostile. People were getting punched, people were fighting our... Unbelievable it was, but now, nobody bothers you. It's great. That's the difference. He was my dad, you know, he's a he's a tough man, but he had a heart like a like a lion, you know. Just one of them, conflict, son and father, you know what I mean? I was a man before I was a boy. So I thought I knew everything. I knew fuck all. He taught me everything. From meeting him, my interest in fishing um, matched his. I got a little boot, like, like Derek. And I made a living at the time he was fishing with his son, Stephen. Um, and occasionally, um, he didn't turn out uh, to go. So Derek used to phone me up. I wish he was here so we could do it again. <laughs> I wish Stephen had kept the boat, actually. Um, and I would have happily gone and helped Stephen as well. Who needs a boat? A 
another thing my father taught me is how to make lobster pots. When it's in the water, the smell attracts the lobsters. So that's on the seabed. They go around the pot and they see that as a way in. They go, oh, hey, up, Christmas dinner. Then they go, when they drop in, can't get it back, they can't get back out. So this bit here, the, what they call a monk, they think that's a way out. So go, hey, up, right, we've had the Christmas dinner, let's go and have a Christmas drink. And they drop in, and then they're caught twice as much, and they kind of get out. And that's it, you've got them. The people that are involved in the fishing now, they seem to want a fortune rather than a living. He wasn't a greedy man. He took enough to survive. And enough for a drink, of course. He's my father, and I love, love the bones off him, and just carry the legacy on, basically, because it's, it's a dying, it's a dying trade. It's uh, nobody does it anymore. He, he was the last of the diehards. He was, a, he was the last one, so I just want to carry it on. Derek, Derek had a very simple, but a healthy life, uh, and he enjoyed what he did and I enjoyed doing it with them when I got the chance. I miss Derek. <laughs>